Hello everybody, Frankie Day here. Okay, fellas, uh, this is the second uh, video done tonight, a double feature video done. Uh, this one's on the update to Winter Project of RMS Lusitania. This, I believe this is video four, I think. And uh, I've been at this pretty much for about, uh, about three days, about four days, folks. Uh, four days I've been doing this, and uh, so so far I got it at this stage of the construction, as, as you can see behind me, I got it about 90% finished, uh, minusing lifeboats and a couple of other parts here and there. Then I got to do the rigging and uh, touch of painting here and there, and she's waiting for her railing set, which I sent away for, and I just now got a hold of them. And, and uh, Tom Model Works is sending it back towards me. So, uh, in any case, there'll be a final reveal of this probably next week. And it'll be done. Minusing the railings unless I get it in time. And um, that'll be that. Okay, folks, so take off the last video. I've got the bridge deck all done. All the bridge deck details have been painted. The bridge itself has all been painted and assembled. I got the funnels all assembled and uh, it's submitted to the casings and I got the aft, the second class uh, 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 superstructure after the center section of the hull. I got there all, all installed and everything and uh, so I'm pretty much on my ways of getting her done and uh, she's relatively she does build pretty fast. And another significant piece of history so forth. <clears throat> I believe uh, May, the 7th of May of this year, Lusitania would have been sunk for 100 years. So she has a birthday coming up. She'll be 100 years old. May 7th at 2, a, uh, 2 p.m. When uh, Leutman, uh Walter Schwiger put a fish right in her hull and sunk her. And that was a very, very, uh, very, very sorry event, folks, you know, for something like that to happen. But during the cruiser rules, you know, they, uh, they didn't, they got henceforth too much in, um, uh, forming an opinion to, you know, to, uh, heal, heal, heal that or not. But in any case, so that, what it was, is they looked at her as a, as a, as a armored auxiliary cruiser and using PS passengers as a shield. And uh, Solter Schweiger didn't look at it that way. He looked at that ship as more or less as, a, as an enemy, a target of war. And uh, it, was, it was very terrible for something like that to happen. And a beautiful ship has to go down. Okay, folks, uh, right now you guys stay tuned right here and uh, we'll zoom right in. We'll take a look at the progress done in RMS Lusitania and I'll discuss what's done on it. And uh, we'll come up back to me and finish up the video. Okay, fellas, right here, as you can see, I've got the, the, all the details done on, on the hull herself right here. And I've got the bridge deck all assembled on top of the first class promenade uh, deck walls right here. I got all the funnels, the hand covered funnels on top of the, uh, the ventilation system uh, installed on there as well. And uh, I got all four funnels done, as you can tell. And proceeding looking aft, all the way aft, I got the second class, uh, the second class uh, uh, cab uh, cabin uh, superstructure walls, uh, the after house, folks. We'll zoom a little here more, folks. There she is. She's focusing now, guys. So that's the second class uh, superstructure right there. And all the way we're seeing aft the top of the ventilation system going to boiler room number 18, which is that funnel right there. And you got the first class of Grand Case uh, skylights right there. And notice no, the funnel arrangement, folks. The Mauritania had the uh, cowling vents. And this one had the old-fashioned man cover vents. And these old-fashioned uh, man cover vents right here, they, they didn't capture very much ventilation because they didn't rotate like the, like, the, like the cowling vents does. 
So actually, these were actually just, they shut up and down like a man cover. That's why they call them man cover vents. They found out a lot of the customers didn't, a lot of the uh, the passengers that, uh, that that held passage on the on the Lusitania complained about the ventilation. That's why a lot of the portholes were open all the time. And of course, that was part of her demise too as she sank. And uh, as we see forward a little bit, We got the bridge installed right, right there, and uh, I got a little Captain Turner's right there on the bridge. And um, it was a beautiful ship, folks, to say the least. I put a lot of work in this thing. I got about, I got almost almost 60 hours in this thing already. So what I'm trying to do, folks, get all these uh, winter projects done, because I it's going to be springtime real soon, just round the block, and I want to start getting some airplanes going. And uh, slowly but surely, folks, I'm getting my stuff done. Soon I get this big baby girl all finished up. I'm hopping on the Arizona and I get her all done. And pretty soon, uh, when springtime gets here, I'm going to start my Denmark and start getting her going. And uh, start uh, building uh, other group builds as I go along. As you can see, the graceful lines of the RMS Lusitania, folks. 785 feet long from stem to stern, uh, 43,000 tons. May 7th, 2 a.m. in the afternoon, the Walter Schweiger shot one tube, one torpedo, and a torpedo hit exactly in this area right here. That was a, a coal bunker right there. And a lot of historians say that the magazine, which in this area right here, was never uh, caused it for the, uh, the second explosion that caused it to blow up. And uh, actually, the two explosions did occur, folks. Uh, Dr. Ballard of Woods Hole did an investigative survey on the RMS of Lusitania and found out if, if it's really true that the magazine did blow up. So what they did is when that, when that torpedo went and right in here, hit the side of that coal bunker right there, it could have a lot of coal dust. See, coal dust is very combustible. <clears throat> For it to be able to blow up, it's got to have a source of ignition. So when that torpedo hit the side of the hull of that ship, it shook that coal dust off. And then when it blew up, it ignited the coal dust, and it also violated the, the broiler as well. And the rest is history. With her going 18 knots with all the portholes open, uh, that explained why she went down in, in less than 20 minutes, uh, taking with her over 1,000 people. And so that was uh, historians for years. So actually, uh, Dr. Ballard more or less uh, solved the case of the uh, sinking of the Lusit Lusitania. And we'll back out a little bit here, folks. As you can see her in her splendid glory right here. She's a beautiful ship. And uh, she's very pretty. And she has very graceful lines. Uh, the Admiralty uh, recognizes her as a... Uh, auxiliary cruiser and a great uh, blue ribbon holder she was the queen of the greyhound of the north atlantic until the events of the bremen so this is a beautiful ship folks the rms lusitania is a, is a very beautiful ship it's a ship that america forgot a lot of people have forgotten and eventually got us involved in the in the first world war and uh it's too bad that a a merchantman like that's got a he, human beings got to use that as a shield and the walter schweiger he didn't look at it that way he looked at that as munitions of war and uh, i don't know what kind of conscience a man had when he uh just when he just murdered innocent people and babies if i was a u-boat Captain, I, I could not sleep at night doing that. But folks, you know, everybody knows when the when the war when the war is held, it's there's, just, there's no rules to war. It's very nasty business. Okay, folks, we'll come right back to me. And we'll zoom in and um, we'll finish up the video here. Okay, guys, that uh, that, that concludes. Uh, Video number two, uh, next is video number four of my uh, Armist uh, Lusitania. 
And that's the end of my, the two uh, videos I did tonight. So that's double featured for a good Saturday. And those will keep you guys on your toes. So I should have the final reveal. That's probably on... Um, I say by Wednesday of next week. And so tomorrow I'm going to start working more on my uh, Lancaster for my group build. And start working on... Clint, the Mad Modelers Go Big or Go Home group build my F11C, no, no, BF2C Helldiver. And uh, so I'm going to make a video of that probably by, a, hopefully by Monday or Tuesday. So i got a lot of work I'm catching up on, folks, getting all done. Okay, guys, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in one more time again. This is Frankie Day signing out, and uh, please subscribe, make Mama happy, and, uh, be happy with your modeling. Enjoy yourself. And uh, thank you for tuning in, guys. And may God bless. We'll catch you guys next video. Bye, boys.